Good morning. Um, I'm. This is Wednesday's lesson, but I'm making this video on a Tuesday, uh, the morning after the government's announcement. Um, so we will be like this for at least six weeks. Um, and of course, perhaps more importantly, from your point of view, we know that exams are not going to take place in the form uh, which was planned. We don't know um, how assessment will take place, but it does really emphasise the importance of you keeping up with what we're doing and supplying me with plenty of evidence of your progress. And uh, yeah, that last point, particularly important in the absence of exams. So um, thank you to those who've already responded to yesterday's work. Uh, and uh, please, if you haven't done that yet, can you do that? And then we're going to move on. We're going to do one more session on standard form. Um, and then we're going to move into revision targeted specifically at the mock exams. We still very much expect the mock exams to happen um, when we return to school. So that mock revision list that you've got is still really important. And we're going to go through um, six of the topics in full lessons and then six topics with starters. Those are identified on the revision list. Um, and we'll do that over the next couple of weeks. Right. So what if we're asked, so yes, so our objective for today, ordering standard form numbers, date uh, Wednesday the 6th. So what if we're asked to put um, a list of standard form numbers in order? Um, like, for example, these. I've attached uh, this sheet with these questions on. So again, you might want to print it out or you might just want to look at it on the screen. That's absolutely fine. Um, what if we want to put these in order from smallest to biggest? Well, we've got a couple of options. I mean, one thing we could do is use the technique from yesterday and change these to ordinary numbers. So 3.2 times 10 to the 2. So that would be 3.2, two jumps. That's 320. And this is a tiny number, 4.5 times 10 to the power of minus 4. So that means I'm jumping the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 0 0.00045. Uh, and this 2.9 times 10 to the 2. 290. So I could do that and then put them in order. That's nice and easy, isn't it? I'm sort of hoping we don't need to do that, though. I'm sort of hoping we could put them in order just by looking at the numbers as they stand. Let's start by looking at the powers of 10. I know that 10 to the power of minus 4, this is a tiny number. Negative powers of 10, this is the same as saying divide by 10 to the power of 4. So this is clearly a tiny number. So that's bound to be the smallest. So I'm going to write that one down first. This is pretending I hadn't bothered doing this. I'm doing this by just looking at the numbers. OK, cross that one out because I've dealt with that now. Now, these two have got the same power of two of 10, 10 to the power of 2. So the power of 10 doesn't help me. So now I look at the numbers themselves. Well, 2.9 is going to be smaller than 3.2. So there we go. 2.9 times 10 to the 2 and 3.2 times 10 to the 2. Um, now, if you decided to go back to the ordinary numbers, it's quite important that when you wrote your answer out, you didn't write 0 0.00045. You wrote the numbers as they were presented to you in the question. Um, so question two, smallest to biggest. So uh, 10 to the power of 6 is going to be the, uh, the smallest, but I've got two 10 to the power of 6 numbers. So I then need to look at the number between 1 and 10. So that one's clearly the smallest, isn't it? That's 2.3 times 10 to the 6, followed by 4.51 times 10 to the 6. And then I've got the 1 10 to the power of 7 number, which is always going to be bigger. So I'm comparing these numbers by looking at the power of 10 first, and then looking at these numbers here. So do you want to have a go at uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6? And this time I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to show you the answers. So please don't just let the video run. Pause it at this point and have a go yourself. And then I'll come back in a few seconds and show you the answers. OK, so with number three, I had one 10 to the minus three number. That's the tiniest. So that was bound to come first. Um, I then had a couple of 10 to the power of four numbers. So I then looked at the number between 1 and 10, so that came first, followed by that one, and then that came after. So that was that. And with number 4, 
Um, I had three ten to the power of three numbers, so I just put those in order. They were already in order, weren't they? And then I had that was the biggest because it was ten to the power of six. Um, and for five, they were all ten to the power of four, so I just looked at the number between one and ten and put those in order. I'm sort of assuming that ordering decimals is something you're confident with. And similarly, six, they were all ten to the power of minus three, so these are all tiny numbers, but which is the smallest? Well, we have to look at the number between one and ten, so that's the smallest, and then work our way up. So hopefully you were okay with that. Right, so what about the second half of that sheet? So here we are asked to put a mixture of normal and standard form numbers in order. So the question is the same, but it's a little bit fiddly, isn't it? Um, and, and I would suggest there are two approaches. We can either, I'm going to look at question one here, we can either work in standard form or we can work in ordinary numbers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write all of the list in either all in standard form or as an ordinary number. So I'm going to do this question twice. Obviously, you don't need to do it twice. You can pick a method. But let's go with standard form. So I'm not answering the question. I'm just writing the numbers out all in standard form at the moment. So this isn't my answer. This is just me using a method. So the first number is already in standard form, doesn't need to be changed. This number here isn't in standard form. So I'm going to use my jumping decimal point method from yesterday. So one, two, three to get to a number between one and ten. So that's 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3. Uh, this number here, not in standard form. So 1, 2, 3, 4 jumps to get a number between 1 and 10. So that's 3.5 times 10 to the power of 4. And this one is already in standard form. Now I could put those in order. So I could now answer the question by putting them in order. So uh, 10 to the power of 1 is the smallest power of 10. 10 to the power of 2 is the next biggest power of 10. I've then got a 10 to the power of 3. And I've got a 10 to the power of 4. Now you're probably okay if you write your answer like that, but in the original question, these two numbers weren't written in standard form. So I'm just going to be extra careful by changing my answer so that the two numbers that weren't in standard form are written as they were written in the question. So I think you'd be OK with that as your answer, but I hope you can see why I've rewritten it like this. These two numbers were originally written as ordinary numbers, so that's what I've done. So that's one way of solving that problem. The other way of getting exactly the same answer is to write everything as an ordinary number. So here we go again. This number here is not an ordinary number, so I'm going to jump my decimal place forward to two. This is what we were doing yesterday. That's 230. This is already an ordinary number, and this is already an ordinary number. And this, I need to jump my decimal place forward one, so that's 61. Now I've written them all as ordinary numbers, I can put them in order. 61 is clearly the smallest. 230 comes next. 2,435,000. 2, Last thing I'm going to do, this number wasn't written as 61, it was written as 6.1 times 10 to the 1. And this number was written as 2.3 times 10 to the 2. So I'm just changing the numbers back to the form they were given to me in the question. Now, I've got exactly the same answer using the two different methods. So you don't have to use both methods. You can use either that or that. It's entirely up to you, but you've got to make that choice. You've either got to change all the numbers into standard form and order them that way, or change them all to ordinary numbers and order them that way. 
So I'd like you to have a go at two, three and four. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to show the answer to two and three. And you're going to send me a photo of your answer to four. Pause the video now. OK, so here's my answer to two and three. I, I use standard form for two and ordinary numbers for three, not because that was better. I just wanted to use the two methods. You can use whichever method you want. Um, I'll tell you which one I think is best at the end. Uh, so with the first one, I changed all the numbers to standard form, put them in order and then changed this one and this one back to an ordinary number because they were ordinary numbers in the question. Uh, this one, I changed them all to ordinary numbers, which was a bit foolish, wasn't it? Because that was a really, really tiny number. It was obviously the smallest. I didn't need to write it down. Um, and this was a really, really big number, and it was obviously the biggest. So um, so there we go. Anyway, um, I wrote them out. I wrote out that rather than that, because that's what was given to me in the question. Uh, then 123, then that one. And then again, I wrote this rather than this, because that was how it was given to me in the question. And I look forward to seeing a little uh, uh, answer, to, a, a little photo of your answer to question four, um, either on class charts or email. It looks like class charts is a little uh, iffy. Hopefully it will be sorted out by Wednesday, but um, whichever works for you. OK, one final thing um, while we do this quick revision of standard form. Um, you might be asked to do a calculation with standard form um, now on a calculator paper. Really easy, just type it on any calculator. But on a non-calculator paper, um, it's a bit more complicated. Um, and multiplying and dividing are one issue. We'll perhaps cover that in another revision lesson. Adding and subtracting uh, are um, a little bit trickier. So we're going to just going to briefly finish by looking at how we can add and subtract numbers in standard form. And I think the easiest way to do it is to change them back to ordinary numbers. So 2.3 times 10 to the power of 4, that's 4 jumps, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that is uh, 23,000. And 3.2 times 10 to the power of 5, so that's 5 jumps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 320,000. So I'm going to add those two numbers together. Now you might be able to do that in your head, if not use a uh, column addition be careful with your numbers though make sure you get your, your digits lined up and we're adding so uh, so it's now that's the correct answer but my question used standard form so i really ought to give my answer in standard form so there's the decimal point. Let's jump it till we get a number between 1 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3.43. That's between 1 and 10. And that was 5 jumps. So that is my final answer to that question. So have a quick go. So I haven't attached this. This is separate. Have a quick go at these two questions. Pause the video and I will show you the answers to them in just a second. OK, so with the first one, I uh, changed it into an ordinary number, 3,500,000. Uh, this one was um, 980,000. I added them together and that gave me 4,480,000, which I changed back to standard form. Did you spot this was a subtract, a takeaway one? Um, so uh, I changed this one into 420,000, this one into 87,000, and then just did that to take away that. Some of you would have been able to do that in your head. Others would have done a column subtraction, which is a bit fiddly, it involves borrowing. But that gave me 333,000, which is 3.33 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay. Um, so you've got one question to um, submit, question four, your answer to that one. And um, I will be in touch again on Friday when we'll have our third lesson, where we'll move away from standard form and we'll hit one of the other revision topics which are on the mock revision list. Take care. Look forward to hearing from you.